We are now in the question 21. It is to compare theoretical and experimental probabilities. Let's look into the first problem. Here we have a student who is spinning a spinner with four equal sections and 100 times are recorded over here. It's given. Find the theoretical probability of spinning blue color specifically. Write your answer as percentage rounded to the nearest tenth if necessary. And then we need to find the experimental probability of spinning the same color blue. Write your answer as percentage rounded to the nearest tenth if necessary. First of all, experimental probability is something that is really done by a simulation or by real experiment. Whereas the theoretical probability is what is supposed to happen theoretically. It's not really that will happen, but it might happen like that. But if there are lots and lots of tries, we are instead of 100, if you do 10,000, then all these will come very close to 25% itself, all of them. Now we will see over here the theoretical probability. Theoretical probability. How many spinners, uh, the spin is divided into how many colors? It's four sections, right? So the total possibilities are four. Total possibilities. That is the total possibilities. It's not TP. I meant TP for theoretical probability, okay? And then what is the color we require? Blue, how much is it? Only one section. So the probability is 0 0.25, but they are asked in percentage. So it's 25%. Now, what about the experimental probability? Now, over here, you can see all these, color, all these colors, right? They have given the frequency for each color. Now, we will only focus on the blue because that is what they want. How many times blue occurred? It have occurred 38 times divided by the total. You can add them all up or they have just given it 100. It is 0 0.38 that is equal to 38 percent now you can see over here theoretically it's supposed to be 25 but experimentally it became 38 percent but if it was much much tries then it will all correspond to 25 percent that is the uh, law of large numbers that is how we do it the first part is the first answer a second is 38 that's it now over here it's the same thing it's about heads and tails it's just two possibilities so one divided by two is the theoretical probability that's 50 percent you can see it's 50 percent right but they want heads so what is experimentally 73 divided by 125 that is the total possibility now when you do it you are getting 58.4 which is close to 50 but if you have increased this a lot of times if you have done the experiment plenty number of times, more than thousands, then it would come very close to 50. Same thing with the die. Please do this by yourselves. It is 1 by 6, the theoretical probability. Now, which number you want is 3. So the theoretical probability is very simple. It's 1 possibility by 6. The experimental will be 27 by total is 150 given over here. Put it in the calculators. You'll get the answer. In person, this is 16.7 and over here, sorry, this is 18%. Very, very close. Now we have a different type of problem. But Tiana sells handmade earrings online. Last month, she sold 60% of her inventory. Design and run simulation that can be used to estimate the probability of selling inventory. Now you need to make a simulation. This is very important. What this means is, now, this practically, when it's coming for writing, you can write own made up numbers. It's not going to, uh, you know, you're not going to understand. But you can uh, always use your calculator to find random intervals. I'll tell you in a while. But first of all, what's the theoretical probability? Last month, she sold 60%, right? So it's 0 0.6. This is the probability that she's going to sell. But now we should do a, in, you know, simulation. How it's done, I'll just show you the answer first. Here, you know, the theoretical probability of selling is 60, not selling is 40%. So what we can do is, you can do it in a different ways, but the best way would be a spinner. Because you can easily cut it into 60% and 40%. Now, if you have a spinner like this, so it is 360 degrees in total, right? So 60% of 360 is how much? 60% it's over here, 216 degrees. You can put in the calculator. Whereas 40% of 360 would be 
144 degrees. So these are the two degrees. So now 200 and if this is 0, 180, somewhere over here and the remaining part is 40. So this is 40%, this is 60%. Now we should have a pointer to mark which, which section it falls and you have to spin this, keep on spinning this. Do the spins about like maybe we have performed 50 trials as been told, you can do it. Keep on spinning and then what happens is you need to note down. See over here they have done the uh, spinning and they got this answer. This part is called sold part because sold is 60% whereas not sold is 40%. Now here after spinning this randomly they got 32, 18. You can write made up values but make sure you write sold bigger than the not sold part because that is what will most probably appear. I mean even if you do the experiment really. And now find what is the sold 32 by 50 it is 64% whereas not selling is 36%. Theoretically it was 60 40 but now if you do the simulation it's very close 64% and 36% that's how it is. Now if you want numbers randomly you can do it in your calculator as well. Let's take out our calculators. Here you can see there is something called random. You can press alpha and over here, random integer. Or you can just press random also. Now specify from where to where. I want say one numbers from one to three. Okay, three, one comma, that is by shift and this symbol. Three, close the bracket. Now it will give me random numbers between one and three, one, two and three. Now this is not very accurate. Now more accurate would be I should take numbers from 1 to 10 and then 1 to 6 would be sold whereas 7, 8, 9, 10 would be not sold or you can take from 0, 0 to 9 okay or 1 to 10. So I'll just change this to 10. Now I'm getting a random answer. This is 5. So first 6 digits are for sold. This is sold 1. You can write 1 frequency. Again this is not sold. Again, let's do this is also not sold. 7, not sold. Now again 1, 9. See, they're randomly coming. But now you saw I've pressed many times. I think so. Many times 1 to 6 numbers came. These are all random. Sometimes you might get not sold more than you know sold, which is very highly unlikely, but still there is a chances, you know. So this is how so this is how we can randomly assume uh, randomly get the integers. That's the answer. Now, again, it's the same problem, I guess. Let's read this. Lamar designed a soccer computer game. He coded that the programs such that a player will make a goal on 35% of the attempts. Paolo is testing the game and he thinks there might be an error uh, in the game's programming. She attempted to make 30 goals and only four were successful. Okay, run and evaluate the simu simulation and decide whether the, whether Paula is correct. Sorry, Paula. It's not Paulo. Paula. Okay, now this is about a simulation over here. It basically makes 35% of the time a goal and remaining time not a goal. So it is 35%, 30 by 100. But you know, for the simulation, it's better we simplify it. You can take 1 to 100 and whatever, you know, we have to do a simulation, they have told. So first of all, let's just write this 35%. How much is it? 7 by 20. So that means if you take random spinner and cut it into 20 sections, the you know you can do it by cutting into 20 sections, or you can take chips of 1 to 20, and whichever comes as 1 to 7, that means it's a goal. All the other numbers are not a goal. That's how we can do it, do a simulation. Now here we can just use this random int integers and you can just put 1 comma this is shift and this symbol and 20. Now you can randomly press equal to. So if, if it comes to 1 to 7 we know it is a goal. All the other numbers know it's not a goal. So you should do it 20 uh, any number of times 50 number of times or something and then do the probability. Let's see over here directly the probability. Now here you can see the theoretical probability is 35%. That means 7 out of 20 times it's it's a goal and 13 out of 20 times it's not a goal. That means 35 minus 100 minus 35 is 65. 65% not a goal. Now we can do a simulation run, conduct 100 trials. They're telling it's already done. 
they have done see numbers from 1 to 10 where 1 to 7 is a goal and 8 to 20 is not a goal and after conducting they got 41 percent of possibility of making a goal okay now let us compare paula's uh, things it's 4 by 30 now what is the probability of getting a goal 4 by 30 is just 13 percent now compare really the simulation must give you 35 percent when we did a simulation, we got 41%. Okay. But when Paula tried to test that program, she just got 13%. That is 4 by 30, 30. That means the programming has an error and this needs to be rectified. This is the conclusion you can give. Okay. So that's it for this topic. It's about experimental and theoretical probability. For theoretical, it's very simple. It's like standard. You know the things. It will be given. But for uh, experimental, you have to write your own. Now, if they ask you to write your own, just assume some values and write it out. That's fine. Okay, you don't need to do it. Now, if you know it's 60 and 40, tell you got 55 or 65 or 70. And other thing is whatever 100 minus that, that will be the pro probability. Please do try to understand this thoroughly and practice more problems. And the topic will be very easy.